Hello and welcome to episode 17 of my Great Britain Empire Total War Let's Play on Very Hard, Very Hard. And um, in the last episode we took Norway and I'm currently building another army here, which is just requiring cavalry, which will be recruited next turn. And I'm moving that down towards the docks there in just south of London, which I believe is Greenwich. I'm going to leave him there, because if they go over there, I can sail around here in, in a new ship and land my army. Uh, let me, sorry, it's been a while, so I'm just going to get have a look at my income. Not too bad, actually. I can use that income to start upgrading what I have here in the UK and I've made the decision to on my industrial stuff basically get what I can in this section under coke glass furnace I'll probably get the flying shuttle as well ready done because that will boost my income slightly and then I'm going to come over here and grab all the, um, division of labor probably grab social contract that will boost my research rate. Might grab government by consent, but I'm definitely going to grab this one. Oh, did not mean to click like that. Because that will allow me to upgrade to the next tier of research buildings. And then come back and finish grabbing some more of the industrial techs. My military tech is okay, but my naval tech needs a bit of work in terms of artillery and inf and I say infantry but the rest of my army stuff's fine it's just my navy that's letting me down a little bit so I need to boost that which means obviously research research and research so the plan is to push into Sweden and maybe send a ship over to Finland and take that And also maybe push here into there, but Russia might take that, considering how far they've pushed this way. They might take that back, I don't know. And they might take Finland again, I don't know, we'll see. But basically to take Sweden and at least that and Copenhagen. Although I've got a funny feeling I'm going to have to land my army here and march it along the roads into Copenhagen. because there is a Swedish navy sitting there so I need to destroy the Swedes enough that it cripples their economy that they have to disband fleets or face bankruptcy. The thing I don't like is this small I mean it's only a cannon, some battered heavy, some heavy cav and some is that normal line infantry or superior, normal line infantry but it's there, it's could potentially come in down this way and get me so I'm going to hold here as long as I can next turn I am going to repair this already repairing the dock I have a college of divinity there and I think everything else is maxed up as best as it can be I'm tearing that down because I don't see the point of having two colleges there's plenty of other buildings I can put there that will either boost my income or boost happiness so as you've seen, every time I start making advances, I get pushed back. Sometimes through my own complacency of, yeah, yeah, I can win this, and other times because I trust in the auto-resolve. And the auto-resolve in this game is a fickle friend. It has got better in recent years. I do need to go and release some, relieve some pressure on Prussia if they're to survive. Which means I need to start pushing on the French held territories to the left of Prussia. And to do that, I need to take Sweden and Copenhagen to get me an easy way down into Europe. Okay, so they're pulling that back good. If 
eventually I may have to deal with the Barbary States because I'm going to have to take part of the Ottoman Empire anyway. Yes, I know. Trade routes. Good, get that cavalry moving. And repair that. What do I want to build here? Smith. So I'm going to go for the coaching in because it'll increase my happiness and make the whole area a little bit happier in the long run. But how am I doing for happiness here? Don't really know because obviously my garrison forces are there. But that's the way I think I'm going to. That's the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to boost happiness with the coaching in and go from there. Now what I'm going to do this turn. Let's grab this ship and sail it back so it is ready for next turn. Not there, I want the army. Just out of range of getting in that army. Anything I can upgrade anywhere? No, not till I get that blast furnace in. And again, not until I get the spinning mule, which is going to require another upgrade elsewhere. Right, let's skip that turn. Not end turn, so there's nothing more I can do. I like the challenge of playing on these hard, on the very hard difficulty settings, but at the same time, unlike previous Total War games, I mean Medieval 2, the AI actually got no cheats at all. They actually were just um, your you was made harder by the fact that you got less funds, you made less money everything like that. The AI was always counted the same, no matter what setting you played on. So. And Medieval 2 had some good little perks that you no longer see. Like if you were able to outflank the enemy with us and started attacking them in the flank, it would completely shatter the rest of the army's morale. Especially how quick. But they've sort of removed, reduced the amount of morale, morale, yeah, morale shock you can do by flanking with units and stuff in the later ones. And it's still good to see an enemy army break and run, but you have to work for it more from now onwards. So who is now my king? George the Second. Mine can be upgraded. Yep. Boost my income. Boom. Click there, click there, transfer them. Navy can now reach the port. Yes, I know, path blocked, there's a ship nearby in, in port, and it just happens to catch you. Transfer out. And this army is going to take a few turns, but it can start marching this way. Start putting in the coaching in. Um, probably the best way for me to deal with Finland is literally sail a ship over and drop the army because it will take several turns to march around even on good roads. 
I don't know what condition the roads are in Finland. Mm, let me speak to Russia. I'm going to request an alliance with them. No? It's probably to do with my liking with the Prussians. Any other one I can trade with? Denmark I can trade with. Let's try you again. No. Italian states. No. Fine. Sod off the lot of you. And the whole point I used the sloop for that is because sloops are a cheap ship to maintain and they're incredibly fast compared to everything else, so it gave me the wreck that increased range to get further in one turn. Dealing with the Spanish over there is going to be a pain in the backside, but I could probably do it. But it's going to need at least two armies marching down on Spain. And a third army branching off. Well, has Prussia just fallen? Looks like Prussia's gone. Yeah. I would say Prussia has fallen to um, France. Uh, so that just means I can take Brandenburg, give me another capital under my command. Sod off Barbary States. That's going to affect my income. And um, yep. Prussia has been destroyed. the upkeep. Oh, we'll take the unit of militia then. And that will help keep them happy. Yes, sir. Getting Yeah, that'll give me the access to another university taking Sweden Stockholm. Don't know how I'm going to do the crossing here. It might be easier. With France there as an enemy, though, I want Sweden in the way. Let's see about talking to Poland. How are they getting on? How do you... No, I Okay, then it looks like I'm in my in it on my own. Ooh, Finland's just dropped. Yes, I can leave that little. I don't know if I can leave that little Swedish town around there. Hopefully, Russia is going after it.
they're falling back over the northern border and Personally, I try not to destroy any of the facilities when I'm moving my um, forces around because I've only got to repair them later anyway, so... Yes, Cope Blast Furnace. We might as well grab measuring tools because that will allow me to upgrade the roads. First of all... Upgrade that. Parliament building has just been built in London. I think that leaves me with one upgrade for that year, Somerset House. Now we're doing Scotland, nearly 100% Protestant, that will help. He's using this sea route, France, into Amsterdam with all. I will take Denmark, and then after that I will take Hanover. As I take Hanover, one army's going to go this way. I've decided. Circle down through Munich. Push up, what's the army that hits Hanover? We'll push up the Rhineland. Potentially I'll have another army at this point to push into the Netherlands and Flanders. But from here I basically then have to push but into Paris to come round and go, take you, take you. And which I can probably do with one army that way, but I'd need two to come this way towards Madrid and Spain. I'm going to want both armies at Sweden for taking over. I have a little bit of money left. Can I upgrade anything here in the UK? Nope, okay. Let's go and spend a few pennies repairing that then. And as we're well aware, Sweden has New York, which, when that is their only territory left, I'll de declare peace with them. Uh, and I've peaced out with the Huron up here, so that's fine. Obviously, for my objectives, my victory conditions. This mission no longer stands because the 13 colonies have been destroyed. I mean, my prestige is tiny compared to that because I have very little enlightenment, a very small economy, a small navy and a small military. I will push that up. I need to make sure that I take New France. There's a load of other places. I've got to take Florida, Georgia. Some like here with taking Malta and Gibraltar, showing English territories. I have to take Egypt, which will be easy because I will push across this way through the Barbary States. To go to war with them, I may have to come down from, I shouldn't have to do anything from above because that's all the Poland. I will pick off Sardinia and Naples at some point. Probably take Morocco as well because that will allow me once having Gibraltar to move across. It's just a case of I have to make good of my situation that I find myself in and push hard against those that are going to try and attack me. 
hopefully I can do some damage here to Sweden and allow me to push to the left. I don't know if it's wise leaving them alive up there in the northeast. We shall see. We may get to have a battle this part, we may not. like to say we will and if there is a chance that we do start a battle when I get to my 30 minute time limit I will just keep going until the battle finishes but because Sweden is going to be a full stack army and I don't know if it's mostly militia or not but I still want to make sure I can outgun the militia so it may take me a turn or two before I actually do any besieging, especially since I'm going to have to go and attack them with one of my armies. Stop them taking that back. Over here to England. You can start upgrading you. Demand their surrender. Surrender refused. That has to be them there. So we've got another army over here, but continue siege. Right, well, let's jump into this battle and give the Swedes a damn good thrashing. I'm attacking them, so I'm going to have to move forwards. Again, this, this army wasn't built for this sort of field battle, but it is still capable of it. If I have an army designed for a field battle, I like to put horse-drawn artillery in because it moves quicker and allows it to advance quicker with the infantry line. Now their reinforcement should come in behind them. I'm going to... Pop my cannon in there. And I'm gonna go one, two, One, two, three, and group. I'm going to group my grenadiers together. But put them either side of me gun. Solely because grenadiers don't get ability to form square. Compared to your standard infantry line, let's switch do. I think that's a terrain feature that's caused them to do that. General is going to sit here. So he's going to sit just back here. I'm going to dump my light cav on that side. 
using the G key to quickly group everything, and then Alt 2 for my infantry and Alt 4 for my cavalry. Stick my heavy cav there, not that they're actually hiding. No, no mention of them being at hiding woodland. Now are these just regrouping or are they even gonna move to attack me? Looks like they're moving towards me, so let's unlimber them. Unlimber them. It's gotta be their general unit. Or is it that one? It is that cavalry unit is what Hate to be this line infantry regiment right now. As the guns are being sighted and finding their range, we have lost. They have lost a grand total of two. Can't wait to get some veterancy on these guns. Their reload speed will become a lot quicker. That should have hit someone. Fire from shells, that's got to be how to fire. Shot. Sorry, I'm getting distracted watching these go. Ooh, good going, Cannon. Straight through their ranks. This must be where the rest of their stuff's moving to, so I'll just pepper these with artillery for a minute. Come on, guys. You couldn't hit a barn door at 50 paces. But what I am going to do then, whilst keeping these under artillery, is I'm going to advance my troops either side of this hillock and pull my artillery up the middle afterwards. So I want. Three. Advance to there. Now I may have just left the gun line back there, but the guns will have the ability to fire on them where they are. Obviously I lose the effectiveness of canister shot because of the range. That did some damage. Shame the bulls are just hitting the hillside and not skipping off. That could do some nice damage if one of those bulls skipped off up into someone's face. Enemy heavy cav. Are they shuffling? Just a whole position? Looks like it. Ooh. I would not want to be in their shoes though. South Essex, King's 33rd. Run, run, and run. Let's 
Stand by. They're staying just out of gun range. Look at them. Cheeky cavalry. Some of them have been shot, presumably by stray bullets, but... Form square. Form square. So that's right, charge the formations that are in square, Cav. Square. I'm going to run my normal cab with my light cab up this side. I'm going to start a nice heavy flank with my heavy cab going up that side. Both howitzers are found. Sometimes giving group orders causes the guns to go a bit awry and not fire where you want. Now, what to do, what to do, what to do. Four. Start rotating around, please. Run them. Why are we fi fire there and fire there? Form square, form square. They should be able to hold in square pretty well. Where's that cannon? There it is. There you go, light cav, that's your job. Heavy cav. Get them, please. You guys pop out of square, please. Shred them, I do not want them surviving. Push up that way. How it's a ceasefire. Cannons can go silent. So it's hard to push up to here. Come on, artillery. Hurry up and limber. I'm waiting to give you a move order. Grenadiers to there.
if we can have come up the flank. If they don't move, I will hold you. And sit there putting them back for fear of losing them to a halt. That's good. Pull my light cav back over here before I lose them all. Well, they're not light cav, but they might as well be. Come on, let me give the attack order. What is up with that? Form square! Suicide into me, guys. That's nice of you. them off. Continue the battle for a minute. See what we else we can finish off. Run, damn you. catch the general so I might as well let him run As you've probably seen throughout, I'm not a very good cavalry commander. I'm a lot better with infantry, but this is where cavalry should be used and let your infantry rest. Cavalry can't attack and defend, whereas infantry can. Cavalry is only good at attack, and if you have to defend a position, it's very hard to defend it with cavalry. Five, four, three, two. One, they should nearly be gone. Four of them left. Come on, guys. Don't let any of them cross that line. One of them ones left. Don't know if any of them actually crossed the line, so... We still haven't got him, come on. He's one guy and he's evading what? Two 
close victory in my backside. How is that a close victory where I only lost 200 troops compared to their 500? Both armies are battered and retreating. I'm going to do this. Take a quick replenishment. And then push after them, I think. Try them. If I can damage them enough and them enough. And what have they got left? Ooh. They're a unit of cavalry, 2nd Regiment of Horse, they're yeoman, aren't they? Yeah, Provincial Cavalry, or oh, even worse. A unit of light infantry that somehow managed to survive, and their foot artillery, which I think is four guys and like half a cannon. And in this unit, there's two light infantry that are battered, and they've been stood there a while because they're in a fortified stance. If they sally out against me from Stockholm, I do have the advantage due to the fact that I have better quality, more better quality infantry than they do. They have one, two, three, four units of infantry, a cannon, and a semi-decent cavalry. If I can kill their general, all of these fire-locked armed citizenry that they've got, which is equivalent to about half their force or just break. And I'll have to I will do my tactic of using the cavalry to break their and it might be worthwhile marching an army up here to deal with these guys and potentially push on to Kareli Kalia. I'm no good with the Russian pronunciation, sorry. <laughs> and then come down to take Finland. But that's all I have time for this week. I will catch you in the next one. Goodbye.